1340-96.5 KVGC in the news for today. Well, as you heard on Friday, Amador County Unified School District, Sutter Creek Elementary, and Ion Junior High experienced a threat to student and staff safety. That threat was met swiftly by both the school district and the Amador County Unified School District. And in the uh, studio with us this morning is... School Superintendent, Dr. Amy Slavinsky. Amy, good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you. So how did this come to the attention of the school district or the, I, I, I'm assuming from this, there was a teacher named in the rap song that the boy wrote, correct? Um, not completely correct. No, okay. there was an employee um, referenced okay. um, in the rap song. Um, there weren't any specific names, but rather an employee. Oh, okay. And okay. it came to the attention of the principal at Ione Junior High School. And how? How did it? Through students. Oh, okay, so students. Through students and other staff members. And what, at what time was this during the during the morning on Friday or Thursday or you know I'm not exactly sure what time the referrals or the reports came mm -hmm. um, from students um, ultimately to the principal but it, it came to my attention Friday morning okay okay of course there's a lot of there's a lot <laughs> and I have to laugh at this because I've been involved in snow days for a yep. long for 40 years and there's a big conspiracy it was a snow day because of this threat and <laughs> that's about the farthest from the truth that there can be that's right uh, it is know. the farthest from the truth in fact we responded on our facebook page oh, did to, you to, to that, that effect okay. as well it was a real snow day yeah yes. i mean and it was and, and, and you look you you start to the night before you start to look if there's going to be a snow day and then early in the morning you call it exactly it was called before you were even made aware of the of the incident are you calling exactly. it exactly a threat Amy, are you calling it a threat or an incident, or what are we calling it? It was initially referred to as a potential threat to oh. student and or staff safety. Um, that threat has been completely contained at this point in time. Um, uh, the student in question has been taken into custody, and there is no threat, no imminent danger at all at this mm -hmm. time. Has anybody talked to him and said, what were you thinking? Is this for real? Were you just trying to act out? What? You know, I can't, I can't speak to those details. Okay. We want to okay. make sure that we're not sharing sure. any information that might jeopardize the investigation mm -hmm. and going forward. So what's the school district doing moving forward now? We are working very closely with law enforcement, all the different law enforcement agencies that we work with. In fact, I've been in constant communication with Under Sheriff Jim Wagner all week weekend long mm -hmm. and um, working with Sutter Creek PD and Jackson PD and... I own PD. We have a presence at all of our schools this morning um, just to reassure people, you know, and, sure, and to sure. have everybody have an opportunity to take um, a deep breath and be able to move forward and focus on our students. I think it was last week, an in service day, you had with the teachers and uh, the police. You were talking about what to do. And a couple of weeks back, you, right. you also did. You know, to me, I. I, I I'm not sure if giving teachers guns is the right answer. I think the right answer would be if if all schools were equipped, A, and let me just stop there, A, in my mind, I think it all starts at home, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I think most of this problem starts at home and with parenting and lack of parenting and whatever. So let's move forward here. To schools, how about doors that automatically locked when you shut them and no one could get to you? Would that be uh, an answer? You know, we are looking at all of those different types of aspects. I've mm -hmm. also heard people raise questions in the last few weeks about gated campuses or fenced campuses, you know, so that um, there's no chance for an intruder to get in who shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And there are pros and cons to that. You know, you also then get the argument of, well, then that doesn't create a very welcoming environment, right, right. does it? I mean, right. And so advocate to any argument right. though. I mean there's right. always gonna be and, and why punish right. the kids, the good kids that are there and have them go to school in a prison right. Right. when so you we know. are working very closely with, like I said, all those law enforcement agencies and our schools and our principals and teachers and other staff members do a great job of practicing those drills on yeah. a very regular basis. Um, you probably already know that we did a board report on right. Sean Snyder, our director of student services, yeah. and I did a report to our school board this past Wednesday on all of this. So I would really encourage anyone who's super interested to go to our webpage and pull up that information. There's a lot of um, good info about what we're doing. 
when I hear about these as a parent, it affects me in a way. But you, as also an educator and an administrator, when you hear of of shootings, incidents like we had in, in Florida and, and, and elsewhere, what does it do to you? How does that feel for you? Well, I take it very seriously. You know, um, first and foremost, I'm also a mom right. and have right. two of my own kids. And so we all have a tendency to think of our own families and personalize what we're experiencing. And so because I have my own children and I am a mom, I look at all of our 4,000 students in our school district as if they were mine. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do work really hard to make sure that our campuses are safe all of the time. And we're exploring you know, new ways of improving that. I think you're saying something really important because something that I notice, I don't have kids. I have younger brothers born when I was uh, 16 and I think 13, somewhere around there. So, you know, they're quite a bit younger. And I think if this was my brother, so that's, that's where yeah. I go. But the thing that makes me sad is people that are so passionate on one side or the other for uh, guns, against guns, or for guns, almost forget those were 17 lives. Mm -hmm. and, and people get so worked up about the issue, and they almost, I think, tend to forget about those 17 lives. And, and, and I like hearing what you said and, and how yeah. it affects you because 17 people are no longer yeah. here. And that's, yeah. that's Amy, what's important. Yeah. We're right. talking with the Amador School Superintendent Amy Slavinsky this morning. What, what about school resource officers and having someone on campus all, all the time? Is that just out of the picture of the budget? It's not completely out of the picture. In fact, as we're moving through the LCAP planning process right now in preparation for the 1819 school year, we are looking at all the different actions and services that we might need to put into place. And uh, Sutter Creek PD has expressed interest in working with us um, in terms of security resource officers. So we're at the stage of exploring that possibility for next year. All right. So moving forward, yes. what do we do moving forward now? Parents, your children are safe, bring them to school. Yep, absolutely. Today's a school day. I was just at Sutter Creek Elementary first thing this morning, and my teammates, Jared Critchfield and Dave Vicari, were up at Ione. We're down at Ione Junior High this morning, um, greeting students, greeting teachers, talking to them, reassuring them. I saw our officers um, at the campuses this morning also. Um, I saw lots of students and teachers with bright smiling faces and the best news is that kids are awesome and kids are resilient and all of our kids are super smart and our teachers are focused on them right. and doing whatever it takes to make sure that they're learning and safe and healthy. Dr. Slavinsky, thanks for being here with us today. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And let's just switch gears real quick before we get back into the news and you can you can go back and do the cold. You walked in and said it's nice and warm in here. Yep. And JD and I are sitting here in sweatshirts. And, yep. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, so starting with the next school board meeting, we're actually going to be uh, streaming the, uh, the the meetings live for people video-wise to, to watch. Yes, we are. To. Yes, we are. You know, one of the things that we're really working on is communicating and over-communicating with clarity. Mm -hmm. And if we can stream our Board of Trustees meetings live and help people to have even better access to um, what's going on at the policy level, at the governance team level, then that's yeah. super. And we really appreciate your help with it. All right. Thank you again for being with You're us. You're welcome. Thank All you. Right. JD and I will be back with the complete news in just a moment.